All right, students, this is fourth grade ready classroom mathematics, lesson 15, session three, dividing four numbers. This is our last session for this lesson. So if you have not completed these pages already, please pause this video and go complete pages 323, 324, 325, and 326. When you're finished, you can come back and watch this video to check over your answers to see how you did. This will help you become more proficient at these math problems. All right, if you're still watching this video, that means that you have already completed these problems, and I am going to quickly go over them so that way you can check your work. Number one. Find 1,359 divided by 4. So I'm going to write 1,359. Make my model here. You can use any method you would like to solve this, but this is the way that um, you are most commonly going to see from fourth graders. So can 4 go into 1? No. Can 4 go into 13? Yes. 4 times 3 is 12, but I still have two positions here, so put those zeros. 4 times 300 is 1,200. I'm going to subtract. 9 minus 0 is 9. 5 minus 0 is 5. 3 minus 2 is 1. Move that 159 up. Can 4 go into 1? No. Can 4 go into 15? Yes. It can go in three times, so let's do 30. Four times three is 12, four times 30 is 120. Subtract, and we've got 39 left over, so move that 39 up. Four times what is as close to 39 as we can get without going over? Well, we can't do 10 because it'd be 40, so four times nine is 36. Subtract, and we've got three left over. So we're going to add 300 plus 30 plus 9. So that would be 339 remainder 3. Go ahead and turn to page 324. At the top of 324, we have Rogelio has 2,490 stamps in his collection. He divides his stamps equally among his six children. How many stamps does each child get? show your work. Well, what is this problem about? It's about stamps being divided between children. What information is important? 2,490 stamps in the collection, so that means there's 2,490 2, total stamps, and we're dividing it by his six children. So we've got to see how many stamps each child gets. Six cannot go into two, but it can go into 24, four times. But we need two placeholders here. So six times 400 is 2,400. When I subtract that, I get zero. Nine minus zero is nine. And then zero and zero. So I'm going to move that 90 up. Six can go into nine one time. So I'm going to fill that in with a zero, so I'm minus 60, which leaves us 30. How many times can 6 go into 30? Well, 5 times, which leaves us a remainder of zero. So 400 plus 10 plus 5 equals 415 stamps each. Okay, number 3. There are 1,275 people waiting to try out for a show. The people wait in five rooms. Each room has the same number of people. How many people are in each room? Well, so we know that we have 1,275 people total and that they're divided between five rooms. So let's go ahead and write that number down here. Get my area model by five rooms. Five cannot go into one, but it can go into 12 two times, and then I add my two zeros here. Five times two is 10 plus two more zeros, so that's 1,000. Subtract, and it leaves me 275. Bring my 275 up. 
5 cannot go into 2, but it can go into 27 5 times. Add my zero, so 5 times 50 is 250. Subtract, and it leaves 25. So now bring my 25 up. 5 times 5 is 25 with zero left over. So 200 plus 50 plus 5 equals 255. Awan chose D as the correct answer. How did he get that answer? Well, A1 subtracted 1,275 minus 5 to get 1,270. That is how he is wrong. Let's go ahead and move to page 325. We're at the top on number 4. Mariah finds 4,048 divided by 8 using partial quotients as shown to the right. What partial quotient goes in the box? Well, 8 times 5 is 40, plus 2 zero is 40,000. So 8, which leaves 48. 8 times what is 48? Because this one is multiplied by that. This is what we have left. This is multiplied to get there. So 8 times what is 48? Well, 6 times 8 is 48. So the answer is A. Number 5. A tailor has 1,495 yards of fabric to make costumes. He needs 7 yards of fabric for each costume. How many costumes can the tailor make? Is there any fabric left over? So let's go ahead and do our area model. Five by seven. Seven cannot go into one, but it can go into 14 two times. Add my zeros. Minus 1400 leaves 95. Seven can go into nine once, so seven times 10 is 70 which leaves 25. How close can we get 7 to 25 without going over? 7 times 3 is 21, which leaves 4. So the answer would be 213 with remainder of 4 yards left over. Okay, number 6. Jack uses partial quotients to solve 6,035 divided by 5, shown by the area model. Jack says the quotient is 1,235 because 1,000 plus 200 plus 35 equals 1,235. What did Jack do wrong? Well, let's look here. Oh... Well, Jack got 5,000 here, but he should have had 6,035. There's 5, 6, 35, okay. So 5 times 1,000 is 5,000, which would leave 1,035. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 more zeros. Okay, that would get rid of the thousands. 5 times 35 is 35? What in the world? There's no way 5 times 35 is 35. 5 times 7 is 35. So he should have put a 7 up here instead of putting the 35. Jack broke apart 6,035 incorrectly. No. Jack wrote the wrong partial quotient above 1,000. No. Jack should have subtracted 35 from 1,000 plus 200. No. Jack wrote the incorrect partial quotient above 35. Yes. So our answer is D. Last page, page 326. All right, on page 326, 2,259 divided by 3. Go ahead and make my area model. 2,259 divided by 3. Can 3 go into 2? No. Can 3 go into 22? Yes. By 7. Add my two zeros here. 
So 3 times 700 is 2100. We've got 9, 5, and 1 left over. Bring it up, 159. 3 cannot go into 1, but it can go into 15 5 times. I'm going to add one more zero because of my digit there. So 159 minus 150 leaves 9 left over. Move that up. 3 times 3 is 9 with nothing remaining. So my answer is 753. Number 8. Trina has a box of 1,132 beads to make necklaces. She wants to use as many of the beads as possible to make nine necklaces. She uses the same number of beads on each necklace. How many beads are on each necklace? How many beads are left over? So we're going to use our area model to set this up. 1,132 divided by nine. 9 times 1 is 9. Add those zeros, so 900. Be 2, 3, 2. Okay. 9 can't go into 2, but it can go into 23 2 times. So 180, 2, 52. 52 plus something, so 9 times what gets us as close to 52 as possible without going over. Well, 9 times 5 is 45. Subtract, and there's 7. So 100 plus 20 plus 5 is how many beads are in each necklace, and there are 7 beads left over. Go ahead and complete number 9 on your own using whichever method you would like, and I will see you back for lesson 16.